Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar on VAT transaction flow. I'm your host Ashika and this webinar is powered by Zoho Books, Zoho's cloud-based VAT compliant accounting software. Before we begin, please note that if you have any questions throughout this session, you can feel free to type them out in the chat box on the GoToWebinar screen. I have a team of panelists here to answer your questions as we proceed with the presentation. Also, after the session, we will send you a recording of the webinar. This is the third presentation in our VAT webinar series, and today we are going to talk about the various stages present in a VAT compliant transaction. So these are the various stages present in a VAT compliant transaction. Registration, maintaining VAT compliant documents, reverse charge mechanism, filing returns, and claiming input credit. Registration. The deadline for VAT registration was on December 4, 2017, so it's safe to assume that all the existing businesses have registered under the VAT taxation scheme. New business owners can register under the VAT registration portal on the FTA website. The procedure is simple. You create a user account, verify your email address to activate the account, and provide details such as description of your business, your turnover for the previous 12 months, future projected or expected turnover figures, and the expected values of imports and exports. Once the registration is complete, you will be provided with your tax registration number. Supporting documents like passport copy, Emirates ID, trade license, and any other official document that authorizes your business to conduct trade within the UAE will be required to validate your information. VAT Group Registration if a company has multiple entities that trade with each other, it is possible to register as a VAT group. When registering as a VAT group, all the entities within the group are treated as one single entity for VAT purposes. So a tax group will select one of its registered members to act as a representative member for the group. That member will make the request to register the tax group. Transactions made between members of a VAT group are disregarded, that is, no VAT is due on them. However, Supplies made by a VAT group to an entity outside the VAT group will be subjected to normal VAT rules. When a company registers as a VAT group, it will receive a single tax registration number and will file a single VAT return. Deregistration A VAT registered entity in the UAE can apply to deregister if they no longer make taxable supply or if the value of the taxable supply is lower than the threshold value for 12 consecutive months. A person who registers for VAT voluntarily must stay registered for at least 12 months before applying to deregister. Maintaining VAT compliant documents As mentioned in the previous webinars, business owners should be aware that regardless of whether they are registered or not, all the businesses in the UAE must retain financial and accounting records for at least 5 years. In order to remain compliant, we strongly recommend that you use an efficient accounting software even if you are not registered under VAT. Financial records to maintain include annual accounts, general ledger, purchase day book, invoices issued and invoices received, credit notes and debit notes. Records of all supplies, imports and exports of goods and services. Goods and services that have been disposed of or used for matters unrelated to the business and goods and services purchased without applying the input tax. We will now talk about the three main documents in this section, tax invoices, credit notes, and debit notes. Tax invoices are further divided into normal invoice, simplified invoice, and self-built invoice. And credit notes are further divided into normal credit note and self-issued credit note. Tax invoice. So this is a sample tax invoice, and it should be noted that all invoices must be issued within 14 calendar days of the date of supply and a VAT compliant invoice should contain the following details. The words tax invoice should be clearly displayed on the invoice. It should also contain the sequential tax invoice number which identifies each tax invoice in the sequence. The name, address and tax registration number of the supplier and the recipient should be mentioned. Talking about dates, the invoice should contain the date on which it was issued and if the date of supply and the date of issue are different dates, then the date of supply should be mentioned. A description of the goods or services supplied along with the unit price for each good or service 
the quantity of volume supplied, the rate of tax, and the amount payable should be expressed in dirhams. One should also mention details about the amount of discounts offered and the gross amount payable, which is also expressed in dirhams. Now, if the payment is made in a currency other than the UAE dirham, the payable tax amount must be displayed alongside the exchange rate. Simplified tax invoice. So, this is another type of tax invoice and it's issued in two main cases. If the recipient of goods and services is not VAT registered, or if the recipient of goods and services is registered but the value of supply does not exceed 10,000 dirhams. A simplified tax invoice must contain all of the following information. The words tax invoice should be clearly displayed on the invoice. It should contain the name, address and tax registration number of the supplier, the date on which the tax invoice was issued, a description of the goods and services supplied, and the total consideration and the tax amount charged. Moving on to self build invoice. A self build invoice is issued by the recipient on behalf of the supplier. And this happens most frequently when the recipient's accounting practices are more efficient than the supplier's. So a self build invoice can be issued by the recipient provided the document is treated as if it had been issued by the supplier and as long as the following conditions are met. The words tax invoice raised by the buyer must be clearly displayed on the invoice. The recipient of the goods and services should be VAT registered. The supplier and the recipient agree in writing that the supplier shall not issue a tax invoice with respect to any supply involved in the self build invoice. The self build invoice must contain details mentioned by the FTA. Now, these are the same details that are included in a normal tax invoice. Moving on to credit note. So according to the FTA, a credit note is a return or an electronic document in which any change made to a taxable supply that reduces it or cancels it is recorded. Put simply, when the cost of goods or services supplied or the tax amount levied on them that is furnished in the invoice is higher than the actual chargeable rate, then the supplier will issue a credit note to the recipient. Now, this credit note allows the supplier to credit the corresponding amount to the client's account. For example, when goods are returned, the value of these goods is then credited back to the customer's account. Tax credit notes should contain the following. The words tax credit note clearly displayed on the credit note. The name, address and tax registration number of the supplier and the registrant. The tax credit notes issue date. It should also include the value of supply shown on the tax invoice, the correct or the amended value of supply, and the difference between those two amounts and the tax difference in dirhams. A brief explanation of the circumstances that led to this credit note being issued should also be included. It should be noted that the credit note should contain sufficient information to identify what supply the credit note is attached to. And just like self built invoices, credit notes can be issued by the recipient on behalf of the supplier provided the following conditions are met. The words tax credit note created by buyer should be displayed on the self issued credit note. The recipient should be VAT registered. The supplier and recipient should agree that the supplier will not issue a tax credit note in respect of any supply involved under the self issued credit note. The credit note must contain the transaction details mentioned in a normal credit note. And finally, we move on to debit notes. Debit notes are usually issued to rectify erroneous values recorded in previous invoices. For example, if a product costs 450 dirhams and the invoice is wrongly recorded as 400 dirhams, then a debit note of 50 dirhams is issued by the supplier. And the debit note is issued when the recipient owes the supplier. So typically this is done when the tax amount shown in an invoice is less than the actual payable amount or if the taxable value of the supply mentioned in the invoice is less than the actual amount. So let's move on to filing returns. A tax return is basically a document that contains an entity's tax liability and payment details for a specific time period. This document is submitted by a taxable entity in accordance with the form prepared by the FTA. Taxpayers can file their returns online. And UAE taxpayers should file VAT returns with the FTA 
either on monthly or quarterly basis depending on the threshold as shown in the table. Returns must be filed according to the procedures specified in the VAT legislation, which is within 28 days from the end of the tax period. For instance, if Ali has VAT returns for the October to December 2018 quarter, then he will have to file them before the 28th of January 2019. A tax return should contain the following information. The registrant's name, address and TRN. The tax period to which the tax return relates. The date of submission. The value of taxable supplies made by the entity as well as the output tax charged. The value of taxable supplies subject to zero rate made during the tax period. The value of exempt supplies made during the tax period. The value of supplies subject to certain imports for which tax is paid under the reverse charge mechanism. The value of expenses incurred for which the person is liable to recover input tax and the amount of recoverable tax. The total value of due tax and recoverable tax for the tax period. The payable tax for the tax period. Now, according to the FTA guidelines, a typical tax return report has 14 boxes that cover all the business transactions and the amount of claimable input credit. Reverse charge. So in a typical business environment, the supplier supplies goods and collects VAT on behalf of the customers, which is later paid to the government. However, under reverse charge, the buyer on the end customer pays the tax directly to the government. The supplier does not have to pay VAT on input items, so the obligation of reporting a VAT transaction shifts from the seller to the buyer. The buyer will have to record VAT on purchases and sales in their VAT return for each quarter. The VAT accounted by a buyer will be deductible as input VAT on the same VAT return. Now, when is reverse charge applied? Reverse charge is applicable on both goods and services, and there are two main scenarios where reverse charge is applicable. Case 1. If a taxable person in one GCC member state receives a supply from a supplier who resides in another GCC member state, then the receiver will have to pay VAT under reverse charge mechanism. And case 2. If a taxable person receives supply from a supplier outside GCC, then they will have to pay VAT according to the reverse charge mechanism. To understand reverse charge mechanism better, let's look at an example using imported service. Thomas is a VAT registered person in the UAE and he uses the services of a bookkeeper named Arvind who is based in India. Now Arvind is not registered in the UAE so he does not have to file any UAE returns or pay UAE tax. But now that Thomas has acquired services from a non-UAE based bookkeeper, he will have to record the reverse charge on his relevant VAT return. What are the requirements to implement reverse charge? So there are three main requirements. The recipient must be registered for VAT. Every registered business owner must keep proper records of supplies that incur reverse charge. Invoices, receipt vouchers and refund vouchers should all specify whether the tax is payable for that particular transaction through reverse charge. The main advantage of reverse charge mechanism is that it relieves non-resident suppliers of the burden of registering and accounting for VAT in their buyer's location. Claiming input credit. Let's have a look at this flowchart. So we have two main terms here, input tax. So basically it's a tax which is applied on purchase of goods and services and output tax which is the tax applied on the sale of goods or services. So the VAT taxation structure allows businesses to claim input credit for the tax which they had paid while purchasing capital goods for their firm. On calculating net VAT, if the value is positive, then you have payable VAT in your account. And if it's negative, you can claim input credit. Registered businesses whose input VAT is more than their output VAT should indicate on their tax returns that they are eligible to recover VAT refunds. It should be noted that businesses involved in supplier of goods and services taxed at zero rate can claim input credits. Now businesses can claim VAT under the following circumstances. The business should be registered under VAT. The VAT should be charged correctly, that is, unduly charged VAT is not recoverable. Businesses must have proper documents showing correct tax payments and VAT input tax refund can be claimed only on the amount paid or intended to be paid within 6 months after the supply date. 
Also, UAE nationals who are not registered for VAT can still claim VAT under certain circumstances. For instance, the government will be introducing a scheme allowing UAE nationals to reclaim VAT related to construction of new residential buildings for themselves and their families. So they can claim VAT for contractor services, building materials and similar expenses. Input credit cannot be claimed in certain cases. VAT will not be deductible for non-taxable supplies. Customs duty paid at the time of import cannot be claimed for payment of VAT. Furthermore, input tax cannot be deducted when incurred for certain expenses such as entertainment expenses. Say for example, if a manager takes their team out for dinner, they cannot claim input credit for this expense. There are three possible scenarios for input tax recovery. Input tax paid on expenses related to taxable supply. In this case, the tax is fully recoverable by the registered entity. Input tax paid on expenses related to non-taxable or exempt supply. The tax paid in this case may not be recoverable by the registered VAT entity. Input tax paid on expenses related to both taxable and non-taxable or exempt supply. In this case, the tax is recoverable on a proportionate basis by the registered VAT entity. The registered person needs to apportion their input tax between taxable and non-taxable or exempt supplies. So businesses will be expected to use input tax ratio of recoverable to total as a basis for apportionment. So these are the major stages involved in a VAT compliant transaction. And with that, we come to the end of this webinar. We hope you enjoyed this webinar and found it productive. We will have more webinars in the series and you can find more resources under the VAT resources page on the Zoho Books website. We also have upcoming live events on December 12 and 13 to get you VAT ready. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn for more updates on VAT and in case of any queries, feel free to contact us at support at zohobooks.com. Thank you.